Ramipril is a medication that is classified as ACE inhibitor, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. This medication can be identified by its suffix pril, which indicates it is an ACE inhibitor. Ramipril is available as capsule and it can be used in the treatment of hypertension. It can be given either alone or it can be combined with diuretics in order to reduce the blood pressure. Ramipril can also be used to reduce the risk of heart failure in people with post-myocardial infarction. It can also reduce the risk of stroke and myocardial infarction by reducing the blood pressure. However, before using this medication, you should know important facts and what are the important uh, side effects of this medication. All such things we will discuss in this video. Now let us the precautions of Ramipril. Ramipril can affect your potassium levels in the body. Since it is going to affect the renal functionality, it can elevate potassium levels in the body leading to hyperkalemia. This effect of Ramipril can be enhanced when you are taking this medication along with a few other medications that again increase potassium levels in the body. For example, if you are taking potassium sparing diuretics like amyloride, spironolactone and tramterine, they can increase the potassium levels with use of Ramipril. Similarly, if you are taking potassium supplements, hyperkalemia may be pronounced. Therefore, while you are taking Ramipril, longer periods, try to monitor your potassium levels and try to avoid potassium rich foods while taking this medication. Ramipril can reduce your blood pressure. This is the essential action that is required to treat hypertension. However, this may also lead to another condition, hypotension. This is the lowering of blood pressure to a significantly low levels leading to few symptoms like lightheadedness, dizziness and fatigue. How extent you can see hypotension with use of Ramipril depends on many of the other factors. What are the other medications you are going to take? Any existing cardiovascular or cerebral conditions may also affect hypotension. In a few people, Ramipril can produce significant hypotension where the systolic blood pressure may be reduced less than 100 mm of mercury. However, such potential hypotension may not be observed in all the people and it is mostly enhanced by coexisting risk factors. One of them is the dual blockade of renin angiotensin system. Ramipril is a AC inhibitor. When it is taken with other medications like ARBs, angiotensin receptor blockers, it can produce significant inhibition on renin angiotensin system. Sartans like losartan, valsartan, telmisartan are classified as ARBs. When they are combined with ramipril, they can produce significant inhibition of renin angiotensin system that may significantly affect function of your kidneys. This combination can produce significant hypotension. Dual blockade of renin angiotensin system can also elevate your potassium levels. Therefore, this combination is not recommended for controlling hypertension. On the other hand, ramipril can be combined with another group of medications, diuretics. Diuretics are generally combined with lisinopril to produce a generally hydrochlorothiazide is combined with ramipril to control hypertension. This combination can also be used in the treatment of heart failure and acute myocardial infarction. However, when you are combining the diuretics along with ramipril, the diuretic should be used at low dose. The risk of hypotension with ramipril can also be increased with coexisting conditions. In people with ischemic heart disease or cerebrovascular disease, the risk of hypotension may be elevated with use of ramipril. Therefore, in people with any recent stroke or cardiac ischemia, ramipril should be carefully used and a close monitoring for blood pressure should be done while using this medication. Ramipril can affect your blood counts and it can produce one of the condition, a granulocytosis. It is one of the hematological disorder that may be associated with ramipril that results in the low counts of WBC and this granulocytosis can lead to neutropenia, decreased neutrophil count. With the development of neutropenia, people may have increased risk of infections. However, this adverse effect is rare and it can be restored after stopping of this medication. 
this medication can produce a condition called angioedema this is the swelling of the tissues under the skin due to increased capillary permeability and vasodilation since ramipril is a vasodilator it can increase the tissue leakage leading to angioedema however the action of ramipril on angioedema is connected with one of the mediator bradykinin ramipril can increase the bradykinin levels which increases the capillary permeability leading to swelling and angioedema angioedema involves the swelling of tissues under the skin it may affect the face and lips leading to unexpected swelling it may also affect your tongue as well as larynx which may produce trouble swallowing as well as trouble breathing this may produce an obstruction in the air pathway leading to difficulty breathing therefore if you observe any unexpected swelling with use of ramipril immediately this drug should be discontinued this is again one of the common adverse effect of ac inhibitors along with ramipril use of ramipril may develop dry cough which may be observed within first few weeks of the treatment the induction of dry cough is not directly related with vasodilatory effects however ramipril can increase the bradykinin levels in the body bradykinin can produce an irritant response leading to development of dry cough this dry cough can be observed within first few months of the treatment with ramipril however if you observe persistent dry cough with use of ramipril this medication may be discontinued now let us see the doses of this medication ramipril is available as capsule at different strength starting from 1.25 mg to 5 mg for the treatment of hypertension it can be used either alone or it can be combined with diuretics when it is used alone it can be started at a dose of 2.5 mg per day and the dose may be slowly increased based on the response however when it is combined with diuretics the initial dose is reduced to 1.25 mg per day similarly for stabilizing the people with heart failure particularly after myocardial infarction ramipril is given initially at a dose of 2.5 mg twice daily and the dose may be slowly adjusted based on the clinical response for prevention of stroke and myocardial infarction this medication can be given at a dose of 2.5 mg per day for one week then the dose may be increased to 5 mg for next 3 weeks however the dose may be individualized and it may be variable based on the patient conditions so that's all about this medication ramipril i hope this video is useful to you if you really like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thanks for watching see you in the next video